Let's wrap up our discussion of search with a feature that you might even think of Elasticsearch as being able to do, search as you type. So you know, like when you go to Wikipedia or IMDB and sites like that, when you just start typing in a phrase, it will automatically complete it and give you some suggestions for searches while you're typing. Google does the same thing. You can actually use Elasticsearch in a few different ways to do something similar. So let's find out how that works. The easiest thing to do is called query time search as you type, and it's easy because you don't have to index your data in any particular way for this to work. It's just using the same prefix search capability that we talked about earlier. So in this example, let's imagine that the user typed in the term Star Trek. You can use a specialized query called match phrase prefix. And it's just like match prefix that we looked at before for prefix searches, but it works on the phrase level. So by typing in star space trek, it will search for any titles in this example that begin with the phrase star trek. And you can also specify a slop value with that query. So if you want to provide more flexibility with the ordering of the words in that phrase and things like that, you can specify a slop. And with that, you know, you could actually get back results for people who search for a Trek star or titles that don't quite match that phrase exactly and might have stuff in between the terms. If you want to, you don't have to. Now, the only problem with this is that it is a little bit resource intensive compared to an index-based solution. So while there are properties of the inverted index that make prefix matching more efficient than you might think, it's still a fairly intensive operation. So if you're gonna be depending on this at large scale, like someone like Google might, you really want an index time solution. And here's what that would look like. So the trick with doing this at index time is using something called n-grams. And it's a very simple concept to wrap your head around really. So let's examine the term star. If you were to build up a set of unigrams from the word star, that would just consist of all the single letter sets that compose that term. So the set of unigrams would be S, T, A, and R. You can also compose a set of bigrams, which are just pairs of letters inside the search term. So in this example, the star word would consist of the bigrams S, T, T, A, and A, R. Those are all the possibility two letter combinations found within that word in order. Similarly, it has two trigrams, S-T-A and T-A-R, and only one four-gram because it's only a four-letter word to begin with, which is S-T-A-R. Now, this is applicable to searches you type because you can imagine if you treat the input as an n-gram, basically, you can match that against your index to see what terms it matches. So if I were to type in the letter S, because I'm starting to search for Star Trek, that unigram would match the set of unigrams from Star, the letter S. When I type in ST, I now have a bigram I can search against, and that ST bigram would be indexed against star as well, or Star Trek. And if I type in STA, I now have a trigram of STA, and that could be inverted indexed to the term Star Trek as well. So you see how that works. Now there's a specialized type of n-grams called edge n-grams, because you may have noticed that all we really care about for searches you type are the beginning n-grams of a given phrase or search term. So edge n-grams allow you to only compute the n-grams for a given term at the beginning. So for example, if I was computing just the edge n-grams for star, I would only have a single unigram of S, a single bigram of ST, a single trigram of STA, and a single foregram of STAR. So now we have a very straightforward way of matching up combinations of letters against the prefixes that they might match for a given search term. How do we set this up in Elasticsearch? Well, it's a little bit of work, but it's pretty easy to understand once you take a look at it. The first step is to create your own custom analyzer that we're going to call autocomplete. So you see in this syntax here, what we're doing is we're creating our own custom filter that creates edge n-grams. And we're saying we're gonna have a minimum n-gram length of one, a single character with a maximum of 20. So we can handle words up to 20 letters long in our search as you type system. We then set up a new custom analyzer that in addition to the standard lowercase filter also has our autocomplete filter that has the n-grams as part of it. And we say we'll use our own, uh, the, uh, the standard tokenizer with that as well. You might choose a different one depending on what you wanna do. But this is a sane source of settings to start with here. So once we've actually created this new autocomplete analyzer, we can apply that at index time. So when we're creating a mapping for our index, and again, this mapping needs to be in place before you index your data, we could set, for example, as part of the properties on the title field, not only that it's of string type, but also that it's going to use our custom analyzer called autocomplete, which will in turn use the filter we created that creates edge n-grams in our index. Once we've done that, we just need to make sure that our query side is doing the right thing. So the trick here is that we want to use the standard analyzer for our queries. We obviously don't want to be splitting up 
everything we type into n-grams, but we want them to match against the n-grams that we created on the index side. So this is a rare example of where you want a different analyzer on the query side and on the index side. So you can see in this example, let's imagine the user typed in STA, that will be our query STA. We specify the standard analyzer on the query side so it doesn't mess with that. But on the index side, that will be matched against the trigram STA, which will be associated with Star Trek. Okay, so you see how that works? It's a little bit convoluted, but the concepts aren't that difficult, really. One last way of doing this is something called completion suggestors. So Elasticsearch has a mechanism called completion suggestors that allow you to upload explicit lists of completion ahead of time. So if you really want things to work as efficiently as possible and have complete control over how autocomplete works, this provides a mechanism to allow you to do that. So if you have a lot of engineering time and you really want the best possible results and the most control over search as you type, completion suggestors are worth looking into. But for now, let's take a look at those other approaches and actually put them into action and get our hands dirty with them. So let's try the edge n-gram solution to autocomplete and see that in action. Now, like we said, we need to actually re-index our data to get those n-grams in place. So the first thing we need to do, unfortunately, is delete our existing index. So enter in that command there, curl-x delete 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash movies, if you'd like to follow along, and that will blow away our existing index. And now we need to set up our new custom analyzer that contains an auto-completion filter. And again, just to save time, I'm going to put that up there. Go ahead and hit pause if you want to type that in yourself. And if you don't want to worry about the uh, tabs, you don't have to, but I put them here to make it easier to see what's going on. Again, you can see that we're setting up a custom analyzer here that has the autocomplete filter we defined, which consists of edge n-grams between 1 and 20 characters. And that has been made part of the filter set for our new autocomplete analyzer, which consists of a standard tokenizer, the lowercase filter, and our autocomplete filter that we defined that produces the edge n-grams at index time. So let's hit uh, return here to actually get that mapping in place. So now we have a new analyzer in place on the index side. We can actually test that out. So let me show you how to do that. We can say curl dash x get single quote 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash movies slash underscore analyze to test out the analyzer that we just made. And our analyzer's name that we gave it was autocomplete. And we'll get back uh, pretty results, dash D. And for the body, we'll pass in the n-gram STA. Let's imagine that the user just typed in STA and see what we get back. And you can see that that broke that up into a unigram of S, a bigram of ST, and a trigram of STA. So on the index side, those all three of those n-grams will be associated with anything that matches those particular n-grams, such as Star Trek or Star Wars, whatever you might have. So that's a quick test of seeing if your analyzer is working as intended. And sure enough, it is producing edge n-grams as we wanted. So now we just need to actually apply that to our mapping. So we'll do that thusly, curl dash x put quote 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash movies slash underscore mapping slash movie is the type that we're mapping this time. We want a pretty result and the body will be as follows single quote. So in this syntax, we're actually specifying as part of the URI, what type we're providing a mapping for. So we can just dive right in for the movie type. We will set the following properties for the title field. It will be of type string. And more importantly, it will use for its analyzer the autocomplete analyzer that we just set up. Close off all those brackets. And our mapping is in place. So now we can re index all of our data, and that should build up our edge and grams for every movie. That's just a matter of, again, doing curl dash x put 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash underscore bulk dash dash data binary movies.json, which is our handy dandy bulk input format for our movies data set. Looks like it worked. All right, so let's try it out. Let's say curl dash x get 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash movies slash movie underscore search. 
in pretty format with the following search query. Let's just do a match query like we would normally. For the title, let's imagine that the user typed in STA. Let's see what we get back. The observant among you may realize that this isn't going to work. Let's see if you were paying attention. <laughs> All right, why do we get back plan nine from outer space when we searched for STA? And I did all this work to like, you know, index all the edge engrams, so what, what went wrong? Well, remember, we need to specify explicitly that we use the standard analyzer on the query side and not on the index side. What happened here is that because we had an analyzer for the edge engrams associated on both sides by default, my STA got broken up into its unigram components. So in addition to everything else, we're not just searching for the STA prefix, we're actually searching for anything that contains the unigrams S, T, or A. And since the letter S appears in plan nine from outer space and the letter A appears in plan nine from outer space, and even the letter T appears in the, the phrase plan nine from outer space, that came back as a legitimate match for STA because I was indexing all those different unigrams. So to get around that, all we need to do is make sure that we specify the standard analyzer on the query side. And we can do that like this. I'm just gonna hit the up arrow and modify this query slightly. So instead of just specifying that uh, STA title, I'm gonna give it a little bit more information here to go with. We'll specify the query is STA, but we're gonna specify the analyzer on the query side to be standard. And now we should get the results we expect. Sure enough. So now for STA, we're getting Star Trek Beyond and Star Wars because those both match the trigram STA. So we can play around with this some more. Let's uh, change that to actually be a little bit more specific, like star TR. And we got Star Trek again, but we're still getting Star Wars. So, you know, we're again encountering the limitations of the n-gram, the edge n-gram approach here. The problem is that each word is being treated as individual search terms still. So our standard analyzer is still splitting that up. And since the term star still matches Star Wars and the edge n-grams, the fact that we still had TR in there doesn't really help matters. Now, the original approach we talked about using match phrase prefix would get around that, but you know, again, the only real way to have complete control and really perfect results is to use completion suggestors. So consider these ways of like, you know, getting a start and getting some good results, but the uh, every one of these approaches has their own limitations. Completion suggestors are really the only way to get perfect results, but obviously that requires a lot more work because you need to submit ahead of time what all those completions are. But anyway, that's some thoughts of how to do search autocomplete, search as you type with Elasticsearch. There's many ways to do it. Each one of them has their pros and cons. If your aim is to use Elasticsearch for what it was originally intended for, searching, you've got all the basics you need to become productive right now. I hope you're feeling more and more confident about Elasticsearch and how it works at this point. Believe it or not, we're hardly halfway through covering everything Elasticsearch can do. Stay with me. Elasticsearch has many more tricks up its sleeve for us to explore.